my name's Melissa Suter. Um, I have a lab in um, Massachusetts General Hospital and the Wellman Centre for Photomedicine, um, particularly in the pulmonary department right now. And we're focused on using um, optical imaging techniques, primarily optical coherence tomography or optical frequency domain imaging, OFDI, for studying the lung, studying lung diseases, studying the normal lung structure and function. Um, basically seeing how we can leverage the utility or the uses of that to um, help early detection of disease or just increase our understanding of what's really going on in the lung. OFDI is essentially just a second generation version of optical coherence tomography OCT. Um, it's a wavelength swept source rather than, than the old time domain stuff. So what that really means and what it, to clinical utility is that we're able to image much faster, much higher image acquisition rates while preserving the high resolution, um, the imaging resolution and contrast of OCT. So with appropriate catheter designs, we're able to do volumetric microscopy. So rather than doing a small optical biopsy, we can comprehensively image entire um, organs essentially, so at the same high resolution. My work right now is focused on pulmonary medicine um, and the biggest challenge there, unlike um, cardiovascular or gastrointestinal imaging, is that the lung is such a complex structure, it has such a complex branching structure. You know, you start with your main airway, your trachea, and it bifurcates into two, and it bifurcates, and it goes down about 23 generations doing that. So you need to know, you need to know where you're going in the lung. You can't just, it's not a single tube. Um, so that's one of the challenges we're facing using OCT and investigating lung um, pathology is navigating where we want our probe to be to be able to do what we want to do. Um, in addition, the lung, is a highly vascular structure, so if we're piercing anything, we need to be concerned about blood, about motion, there's cardiac motion, there's respiratory motion. Um, the lung is pretty fragile. We don't want to do any damage. You know, we don't want to cause the lung to collapse or anything like that. So we're trying to investigate non-invasive ways of getting to peripheral tumors in the lung or things that we're trying to investigate. So that's been our biggest challenge is how to get our imaging probes to where we want to image within the lung without doing any damage to the patient and accurately getting there. Our focus right now is on lung cancer imaging, trying to use OCT to um, guide biopsy and, and to increase the diagnostic yield of biopsy. Um, when people have a CT scan to look for potentially lung cancer, they might find a very small, tiny nodule in the peripheral area of the lung. Um, and we, they need to be able to get to that, so they pretty much unguided or, or using some sophisticated guiding techniques, try and get there, but they often miss the nodule when diagnosing. So we're developing a needle probe um, catheter that will actually reside within that needle that they use for biopsy. So they can place it in where they think the nodule is, confirm that yes, we're in the lo right location before they take their biopsy. And that's critical because CT imaging, which is usually the first step in, in diagnosing or detecting these lesions, has a 97% or a 96% a false positive rate. So you don't want to be sending these patients in for surgery without confirming that it's cancer first. Uh, we're also doing a lot of work in imaging um, in asthma, uh, looking at airway smooth muscle, looking at how, um, looking at bronchoconstriction uh, along with inflammation, trying to sort of uncover the mechanisms. So much is unknown about asthma. Um, and so we're just trying to use OCT to leverage the high spatial and temporal resolution to better understand what's going on there. We've been doing a little bit of work on smoke inhalation injury, um, trying to see if we can see the early changes that occur um, in patients' airways prior to um, the lung uh, closing up on itself, the airway closing up on itself. A lot of people, when they have someone that comes in with smoke inhalation injury, a lot of um, clinicians will uh, place a preventative endotracheal tube just because once the lung has, once the airway is closed up, you know, you can't really reopen it again very easily. So we, we're thinking we can use OCT to, or OFDI to get a better look at what's going on there. Is there, this patient at risk for airway closure? Are they not? Uh, look at epithelial sloughing and, and various other, other aspects of that. I'm focused on pulmonary imaging and it's such a fruitful area. There are so many different things that it can be used for in the lung. Because people haven't, because of this complex structure, people haven't really uh, delved into it as much in other organs. So lung transplant potentially, uh, looking to see, you know, lung transplant rejection if fibrosis is occurring, using the new polarization sensitive 
optical frequency domain imaging, we're able to really see um, collagen deposition. So we can see the desmoplastic response to tumours and how that affects lung mechanics. Um, they're, they're looking at alveolar structure and function, looking at emphysema, had the degradation of the alveoli. Basically, there's the, there is so much we can still do, looking at cilia motion, um, looking at uh, you know, doing other cystic fibrosis work, looking at the cartilage plates and cystic fibrosis. There really is untold, uh, so many things that we can do really uh, still for in the lung. I'm originally from Australia and I, I came, I was doing biomedical engineering pretty much because I didn't know if I wanted to be um, a medical doctor or an engineer. And I sort of fell into this middle ground and, and it, I came to the University of Iowa for a six month rotation and just fell in love. I fell in love with studying the lung, looking at developing new imaging techniques to actually translate that, to be in the clinic, to see the difference that your work's making on a day-to-day -day basis, to actually build something and see that you can use that to help a patient was just really gratifying. Um, and that's sort of how I, my introduction to it, and I never wanted to leave. I just stayed <laughs> doing that work since then.